uh, I've got a couple of, of, of questions for you because I want to talk a little bit more about fame. You've got a whole section in the back of the book. Um, but before we get to that, you said something else. And there's this beautiful passage from the book um, that I'm, I'm going to read part of your own book to you, if you'll forgive oh, me. Uh, nothing we observe, feel or know about our own human experience or the experience of others comes to us by way of words. And yet words are all we have to make a story in which living, breathing characters move through worlds that seem as real to readers as their own backyard. No writer has ever had or will ever have all the words needed to recreate the world that was alive in their mind. And I read that and a little light bulb went off. Like, yes, that is the problem. <laughs> How do we come to terms it is with the problem? That? You can't, you know, you just have to to accept it. To me, on, on, on some level, to me, it was a relief to know that because it meant that I wasn't doing it wrong. You know, I, I thought other people could do that, but I couldn't, you know, that I didn't have the words. I my vocabulary wasn't good enough. Um, but but when I realized that that wasn't the case, I thought, OK, um, that doesn't mean I can't be a writer. And it doesn't mean that I can't write good stuff. It just means that what I write will never quite match up to what I hoped it was. And I've interviewed lots and lots of writers over the years, probably 50 or more. And almost every person I've ever interviewed feels the same way, you know. Um, and to me, that's a reassurance, too, that you think, you know, a, a famous, really wonderful writer surely wouldn't feel that way. But in fact, they do. Um, so, it, so what I recognize was that it is... It's just an intrinsic part of that process. And so it's one of the things, you know, it's one of the, you know, things to me that separates those who think they want to be writers from those who really do want to be writers, because the ones who really want to be writers, they just go with it, you know, and to them, that's good news, like it was for me, because they think, oh, you know, I can learn to do all these other things. I can be a writer and I don't have to feel you mean, you're always going to feel bad that it doesn't match up, but you can recognize that that's normal. Um, so, so yeah, um, that was a huge, huge thing for me and still is. I have to remind myself of it. The only counter to that I might offer that I found in my, in my own experience uh, is that although it's true that, uh, what is it, the, the, the artist uh, from the first brushstroke knows that they've already ruined their painting uh, <laughs> because it's, it's not going to be what they yeah. had in their mind. Well, there's a great Iris Murdoch quote. She said, every book is the wreck of a perfect idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I love that. I love that. There's something true to it. On the other hand, uh, I have a, a few books in the back of my mind that one day, God, God willing, and I'm alive. If there's enough time, I'll get to that. I've just got, you know, Banneker Bones 3 is the, is the priority for me. And once that's done, if there's still time, I'll, I'll do some others. Um, on the other hand, the world of, I'll, I'll stick with Banneker Bones, the world of Banneker Bones as it existed in my mind was perfect and unblemished, on, but until it, it existed, until it was brought forward on the page where I could see it, the full story didn't, I, I couldn't share it with others, and it didn't, there are things that exist within that story that I found only through the process of Absolutely. bringing it to the world that wouldn't exist in the perfect yep. draft in my yep. mind. I love that part. You're absolutely right, because you think you have this great idea and, and then it takes a turn on you and it, it tells you something better. You know, you, you end up with something you never would have thought of, um, but but actually is better. And I, I love the way that sometimes happens in revision. I've been really fascinated lately by this particular kind of revision where um, you recognize that the pace is off, you know, the pace just doesn't seem right. It's too fast or it's too slow or, but particularly like where it's too fast and you think I've got to have something between this and this. Um, and you have no idea, you know, what, what it can be because, well, you just don't. And then you start saying, well, what if this, what if that, what if something else? And, and something occurs to you and you, you know, you write that little thing, the wall opens a little bit, you know, and you open up op and the door opens for you for this new piece. And then you get it in there and you think, how could I have ever thought of this novel without it? I mean, I've had that happen to me so often, sometimes in one case, um, in an American tune, um, where something got resolved that I didn't know how I was going to resolve or if I could resolve. And, and in that thing that I wrote just for pace, just because there needed to be something between this and that, it was absolutely, the book would have been, it wouldn't have worked as well without it. So you have to stay 
open to, you know, kind of let the book talk back to you in various parts of the the process and to tell you what it is and what it might. It's kind of in a weird way, like raising children. You know, you get this kid and you have to learn who he is or she is before you can raise them. And, it, you know, it's kind of like one of those catch 22s, because how can you know that you can't really, but you have to really pay attention as you go along um, and see you know, what does that kid like? What does he choose? And then, you know, to help him in the direction that he needs to go, that's your job as a parent. You know, it's not to make a ballerina or whatever. It's to look at the kid. And if the kid loves ballet, yeah, guide guide that way. But if not, figure out what it is instead. So it's, it's very, to me, much like a book. Um, can't revise your kids, unfortunately, but <laughs> you can't revise your book. <laughs> The uh, other nice thing about uh, creating, and this is the only uh, one, one of the only times other than when I talk about flying saucers, when I start sounding a little bit woo woo, uh, and I'm very conscious of that. But there is magic in writing when something clicks, Absolutely. and it's like, yes. oh, my subconscious or my muse, whatever it was, knew yeah. something that was leading me to this moment, and now I can see it all clearly. And you can't yeah. have that experience if it's just in your head. It's got to be on the page. It's got to uh, have. It's, it yeah, there. it's alive. It really is. And you're like, who wrote that? I didn't I didn't know that. And I, I think those are the great moments of writing when you write something you didn't know you knew and a book takes a turn that you never, never would have thought of. Um, and it's absolutely right. So there's something happening under the surface um, as those characters sort of evolve and shape and they're they're like real people. You know, you you get a first glimpse of them and then you put them in a scene and, and you see something else about them. And then somebody else makes an up. It's just like meeting people in real life. They are revealed to you over time. Um, and if you're doing it right, they'll surprise you sometimes. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, although I've had the other experience where there, there's at least a couple of uh, long manuscripts on this shelf right over here that probably would have been better just in my head. They were perfect then. Why did I, <laughs> well, that, <laughs> Why did I write that? Too, sometimes. Fortunately, <laughs> not too often or hopefully not too often anyway. 